let's switch gears again. Let's talk about epigenetics, the epigenetics of HIV. So HIV is a type of retrovirus. That means that it starts as an RNA genome, has a DNA intermediate, which integrates into the host genome, and then it goes back to an RNA, cycles around. That's why we call it antiretroviral therapy, targeting the retrovirus. <clears throat> but this therapy is only successful at targeting what I've highlighted in green here. The therapy can't go under the table, like we discussed with the whack-a-mole analogy. So when the virus is at its intermediate stage and it's just sitting there completely inactive, it's just a silent gene. At the white stage, the virus is invisible to the host immune system and to um, our best therapies. But why is this? It has to do with DNA storage strategies. So depending on what you read, our body has between 10 and 100 million cells in it. Each of those cells has about two meters of DNA. Now if you are storing it in a clunky fashion like this, can you imagine how you would look if you just stacked up all the DNA in your body, which is supposedly enough to go to the sun and back a few times if you just stretched it out end to end? it wouldn't work very well. So much like we've come up with better strategies for storing um, tape measures, our bodies have come up with better strategies for storing DNA. They wind it up. They wind it up on molecules called histones, analogous to this yo-yo here, the string being analogous to DNA. So if you have a histone with DNA wrapped around it, and if you look at it, you'll see if you put acetyl groups on the histone, the DNA opens up. And then you can bring it back. So if you have open DNA, it's acetylated. If you have closed DNA, it's not acetylated. That's restated here. Histones without acetyl groups are closed. With acetyl groups are open, illustrated by the open or closed tape measures. Now here, this gets a little counterintuitive, but if you take this double negative name, histone deacetylase inhibitors, so if you, de if you inhibit deacetylation, you actually are increasing acetylation, right? So histone deacetylase inhibitors increase acetylation, which leads to the opening of chromatin. At this point, I would like to know if there are any histone deacetylase inhibitors present in the audience who would like to volunteer and come forward and help me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Me, 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 me. Oh, okay, please, come forward. Uh, we, we have a histone deacetylase, it appears, in our midst. Hello, my name's Paul, what's your name? Penobinostat. Penobinostat. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Penobinostat. You've come to help me? Thank you very much. Let's see what we have here. We have a, um, a demonstration for you to look at. Panabinostat's going to help me. And the demonstration is dealing with DNA. And I've talked about coils open and closed, right? So DNA is not color-coded like this. You can't just look at colors and figure out where that virus is hiding in the DNA. It just doesn't work that way. It's unfortunate for us, but it's a fact of nature. DNA is much more like what you see here. Everything's just the same. It's the same color all throughout. What's shown here are three different chromatin structures from three independent cells. And what you'll see when our histone deacetylase inhibitor, panabenostat, has her activity on these cells, what happens? the chromatin structure is relaxed, the DNA opens up, and transcription can happen, and suddenly if it's, you can see which cell is the infected one. The immune system can actually identify an infected cell at this point because it's opened up, transcription has happened. So because we have this histone deacetylase there, this deacetylase inhibitor, we actually have opened the structure up. But also, the structure was opened up in the surrounding cells. We don't have the targeting capacity at this point to be able to um, 
to target to just specific cells. That's being worked on. But right now, what we have is um, the ability to open up cells and have the, the virus become visible to our current therapies. So um, I think it would be best if our penobinostat would just stand here for the rest of the talk. <laughs> or not. Okay, so go ahead. Thank you for your help. Uh, special thanks to my daughter, Claire, for participating. <laughs> So back to the story. We have antiretroviral therapy and we have latent virus in this white field that's immune or invisible to the immune system. And then we have the transcriptionally active virus which becomes able to be targeted. 